What's up, Lexi? How's it going? One second. There we go. Boom. All right, we're good. What is up, Lexi? How are you doing today? Um, 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 um my mom died. Just say good. Nobody cares. My mom got a new phone case. That's good. Uh, I, I don't know how that affects your day going well. I guess it makes it better. I don't know. I don't. <laughs> Is it a normal day? Yeah. Yeah. Boring. Boring. Normal day. Did you have, do anything over the weekend interesting at all? Uh, mm. Nope. Nope. Well, good talking to you, Lexi. All right, let's call down our next contestant. Let's go over to Bryce. Bryce, what's up? Nothing. Nothing? What'd you do? Please don't say, um. Work. <laughs> work, okay. <laughs> yeah, just school work. You guys only have, what, like two weeks of school? A week and a half, something? No. Um, my school ends on May 8th. May 8th, so like two weeks, two, three weeks. That's not too bad. That's not too bad at all. And there's no in the school testing, so you get to skip all that. So are they doing any tests at all, or is it just busy work? No, no tests at all. Cool, 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 cool. What have you been doing other than school to pass the time? Video games, anime, going outside? I've been playing on my Xbox, but that's it. What have you been playing on the Xbox? What's been your go-to game? I'll do Modern Warfare. Oh, I haven't played the new one. Is it pretty good? See, the, the, the original one came out a while ago, and I played that way back in the day. It's been a while since I played any of those. Well, that's cool. You should get some time to do that. Let's go over. Mariella, how are you doing today? Sure, how are you? I'm doing well. I lost 10 pounds over the weekend. I shaved my beard and got a haircut, so I lost about 10 pounds of hair. No, that's a joke, but I'm doing good. Went to the river the weekend. Sure. I had a good time. River was kind of still flooded a little bit. We had so much rain last week, but it was nice. Nice day, nice weekend. It wasn't rainy. It was good temperatures. What did you do over the weekend? Anything different? Anything interesting? I had a field trip to go get gas. A field trip to go get gas. Yes. Do you? Does your mom ever make you like go pay for the gas or like to go pump the gas yourself? Has she made you do that before? To my memory. Hmm. <laughs> that was one thing I hated doing as a kid. Is my dad knew I didn't like to talk to people that I didn't know. Like I didn't want to talk to strangers. It just wasn't fun. So he'd always make me to go pay in, but like, go inside and pay for the gas. So I wasn't sure, like, if your mom ever, you know, coerced you into child labor and made you go do stuff like that. But that's cool. Did you get any snacks or anything? You just got to see outside? It's a field trip. You just got in the car? Yes, sir. Good deal. Well, everybody can do with a field trip or two every now and then. What have you been up to, Jenna? Anything different? Anything new? So today, actually, I got together with my homeschool group in the Coles parking lot. Um, we stopped by Chick-fil-A and then met up with everybody. So it was really good to just see everybody in person instead of over Zoom and I just bet. get to talk to each other. Oh, yeah. And remind yeah. me, how many... You know, homeschool groups obviously a bit different than like a normal class. Are they all, are you guys all about the same age or is it kind of different or? So with homeschooling, they put you in different groups, mm. but like you're still in the same campus. Mm. Gotcha. So about how many people are in your group? In my group, I would say there's about um, eight people. Okay, gotcha. So that's a nice little group to go out and kind of have a Chick Fil A picnic. See everyone. Were you guys doing school school work, or were we just like hanging out, talking, like seeing everyone? 
Um, we were just hanging out just to see everybody. Nice. That's cool. That's cool. What is up, Corey? What is up, Josh? How's it going, guys? Oh, it's 631. I totally lost track of time. It's time to start class, everybody. Let's go. Let's go. I was just looking. I saw people still joining. I was like, oh, we got plenty of time. Nope. You guys coming in late into my class. How dare you? How dare you? No, I'm just kidding. All right. Let's get started with our warm-up today and all the good stuff we normally do. We're going to start with our creed. Everyone ready? Let's see here. All right. And attention. Yes, sir. Black belt creed. Ready? Set. Begin. As a dedicated student of martial arts, I shall live by the principles of the Black Belt Creed. Courtesy, integrity, perseverance, self-control, and indomitable spirit. Keep moves. Awesome job. Going into our warm-up now. Let's start with 10 jumping jacks. 10 jumping jacks. Ready? Set. Begin. One, sir. Two, sir. Three, sir. Four, sir. Five, sir. Six, sir, seven, sir, eight, sir, nine, sir, ten, sir. Uh, some hands a little healthy wide. Going for ten body squats. Ready and one. One, sir. Two. Two, sir. Three. Three, sir. Four. Four, sir. Five. Five, sir. Six. Six, sir. Seven. Seven, sir. Eight. Eight, sir. Nine. Nine, sir, and 10. 10, sir. Very good. Let's head down to the ground now. We're gonna go to our push-up position. We're gonna do regular push-ups today, just run of the mill, normal push-ups. 10 good ones. Ready? And one. One, sir. Two. Two, sir. Three. Three, sir. Four. Four, sir. Five, five, sir. Six, six, sir. Seven, seven, sir. Eight, eight, sir. Nine, nine, sir. And ten, ten, sir. Everyone's just round to your bottoms. Sit ups. Ready. And one, one, sir. Two, two, sir. Three, three, sir. Four, four, sir. Five, five, sir. Six, six, sir. Seven, seven, sir. Eight, eight, sir. Nine, nine, sir. And ten, ten, sir. Awesome. Good, good, good. Finish strong and pop up. Ah. There we go. And there we go. All right. Going to do some stretching now. We're going to go feet together. Hands by our side, reaching down, touching our toes. Keeping the knees straight. Relaxing, reaching down. Touch your toes. Touch them. If not, just keep going down low. And now we're gonna go feet wide and reaching over towards one foot. And switch to the side. Down to the middle. Uh, 
All righty, standing back up straight now. We're going to put our right over our left, crisscrossing our legs. We're still keeping together. We're going to reach down to your toes. And switch other side. And time, everyone stand up straight. All right, we're going to do one more set of stretches today, a little bit different, a little weird. We're gonna do some hand stretches today. These stretches, make sure like when I teach these to the younger kids, I don't, I don't really do that because they always try and pop their fingers. We're not trying to pop any fingers here, all right? We're just trying to loosen up. It's more of a forearm stretch, honestly. I'm gonna have my palm up. I'm going to grab my fingers like so, all together. And I'm gonna slowly and gently just push, or don't grab your wrist up here. I'm grabbing my fingers. I'm grabbing right here, okay? And that's a little weird with the light. Push holding so wild like a ghost on camera. Okay, so I'm grabbing my fingers here. I'm gonna push my palm away from me slowly and gently. I'm not trying to yank on anything or crank my fingers back or pop. You should feel this in your forearm. Once you pull back and you feel it, don't keep pulling, just hold it right there. We're not trying to do anything crazy here. Just gonna hold it nice and easy. Great, now I'm gonna keep the same hand, but I'm gonna switch the other way. So now my palm's gonna be down and I'm gonna push my hand away. Okay, this one you might, if you're really, really sweaty, you might feel like you're slipping off or something like that, that's okay. Just get a good grip and then, you know, just pulling gently. Great, change hands, other hand now with our first stretch, so palms back up. We're grabbing the fingers, all four fingers, and we're just pushing our palm away from us gently. Excellent, change directions now, palm down, pulling the hand. Great. Now we're gonna clasp our hands together like this. We call it a zipper grip because your fingers kind of like a zipper. And this is a grip we never use for martial arts, right? We never use this grappling. We really mess up our fingers a lot, but it's just gonna be what we use for this stretch. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make big circles as far as I can. Try and keep your arms still. And we just wanna move, I kind of froze there. But we're just gonna roll our wrists out, kind of circling the wrists like this. Try to move your arms as little as possible. Your forearm is gonna move a bit, that's okay. Just don't move from your elbows up. Keep like your elbows glued to your side. And we're just making big circles. So just making sure everything's nice and loose. Feels comfortable, you can always change directions and go the other way, kind of go backwards. This okay, and time, very good. Well, jazz hands with me. <laughs> So we're gonna grab our first water break. When we come back, we're gonna start on our word and our technique. Water break, one, two, three. Okay, so we got Tristan ready, Josh is ready, everyone's coming back, everyone's pretty fast. All right, so we're already back. Our word today is versatility. Versatility, does anyone have any insight into what that word means? What does versatility mean? Hmm, hmm, Mariella has her hand up. Mariella, tell me all about versatility. Means being able to do a lot of different things and being very open to doing different things, like 
essentially the opposite of being a one-trick pony, just having a lot of abilities to do many things. Absolutely, absolutely. Alexi got some things to add, so let's go over to Lexi. Lexi, what else? Um, like Mario always say, say that you have to adapt to different things. Um, like say a baseball player, they can play. Um, um, I don't know what they're called. The other positions. Positions. Okay. Um, instead of just playing one. Yeah, that's definitely a great point. And I think you both, you and Mariella, really hit the nail on the head. Yes, adaptability means you can do a lot of different things. And of course, if you have a lot of different skills, or a lot of different moves, or what have you, when you're playing a sport, you'll be able to play a lot of different positions. If you were a one-trick pony and you're only good at batting, then you wouldn't be good at fielding or you wouldn't be good at, you know, whatever have you, that situation. And adaptability, it requires you to become well-rounded. And it's a tough thing to do because a lot of people have the things they like and they have the things they don't like. Some people may love grappling, but hate striking. Some people may love the striking, but hate the grappling. Some people might love punches, but hate kicks. Everyone has their own things that they're good at and bad at, but to become a well-rounded person, a versatile uh, martial artist, you have to really be able to work all of it. So today what I thought would be interesting is a big part of versatility is moving your body in different ways they're not used to. And some of the more awkward motions are some of our grappling motions, things that don't come very natural to us. Like natural things are like running, jumping, punching. These are things that aren't too difficult most of the times. But some of the weird submissions and things like that that require you to use your legs or require you to move in weird ways, those can kind of be awkward and tricky because you're not used to it, um, moving your body that way. So today we're working on some of the motions that we use in our guard position, which of course when we're on our back and we have someone in between our legs that we're controlling with our legs. That's called the guard. And we're gonna work some of the motions from there. If you want to use a pillow, you can. You don't have to use one a day. If you have a pillow and not a pad, actual pillow would probably work even better than the pad because some of the pads are pretty thick. And you're gonna be using it as a pillow today to rest your head on. So if you have a pillow, go ahead and grab one. If not, it would be good too. I'm not gonna use a pillow or a pad today because my pad's pretty thick and it makes it more uncomfortable actually. But if you're on a very hard surface, you might want a pillow. So as everyone grabs a pillows and comes back, we can get started. Everyone got it for the most part? Excellent. So we're going to be in our guard position today and we're working on some of our different leg motions. So we're going to do these in three levels, easy, medium, hard, levels one, two, and three. And we'll work on one minute a piece. I'll show it and then we'll drill it. We've done some of these in class before, but it's been a while. For level one, it's super simple. All I'm going to do is lay on my back. And all I'm going to do is keep my feet together and I'm going to try and kick a hole through my ceiling. So straight up into the air. We're trying to get our feet and our legs as high as possible. And we should only be on our shoulder blades at the end. So if I just keep my legs up like this, that's no bueno, because my whole back is still on the mat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sit up, I'm gonna roll back, get all the way up onto my shoulders, keep my feet up, and then sit up again. So you can see if I go sideways, I can almost kind of hold myself up there for a second, where, let's go this way, down. So I kick up, and now I can freeze up there with my back off the ground and really kick my feet up into the air. Now, some of you guys have hard surfaces. You might be uncomfortable with your head or neck, so you just have your pillows instead of your hands here, just making sure you don't get too crunched up. Um, so if you want to have your pillow back there to rest your head on, you can. Just make sure you have enough space. If you, if you fall backwards, you might kick something behind you, so you want to kind of be in the center of your area where I have enough space to roll back and not hit anything primarily. So we're going to keep going for one minute. We're not doing 10 or 15. You can continuously go at your own pace for one minute. The goal is to get your whole back up off the mat and they kick a hole in, in your ceiling. Any questions? Perfect. All right. One minute on the clock. On your marks. Get set. And begin. Excellent. What's going to help you as well is if you build momentum. So in between kicks, kind of sit up and roll back. Sit up and roll back. It's going to help you build that momentum to get off your back when you're first starting. Otherwise, you're going to use a lot of core muscles. So great, Jenna. Excellent control. Good, Joshua. Excellent. And so your own speed. It's whatever you're comfortable with. This isn't a cardio exercise. We're not trying to go super fast and, you know, get tired. We're developing balance. We're developing core muscles. 
Good, Mariella. Working in a different way. We're halfway there, 30 seconds down. Excellent. I know I'm gonna do a couple and I try and do one, hold it for a second, see if I have good balance up there and then come back down. That's awesome. Good job, Bryce. 15 seconds about. Excellent work, everyone. And five, four, three, two, one, time. Everyone relax. Excellent. So that's level one. Level one is normally pretty darn easy. Now we're gonna step it up, of course, to level two. Level two, we're gonna work on a submission we haven't done in a long time. It's our triangle choke. Some of you might know the triangle choke. Some of you might not know the triangle choke, but the triangle choke is a choke we do with our leg muscles. It is my favorite submission. And of all the submissions in the world, triangle is my favorite. I've won more matches with the triangle choke than by any other submission. That tournament and going out competition is the number one move I use. I really, really like it. Um, but the trick with triangle is imagine if you're in guard here and you're on your back and you have someone in your guard, their head's not down here normally. If they're doing a very good job, they're postured up and their head's up tall. So if I just lock up my triangle, it's not going to work. I've got to get my hips and my legs up there. That's why level one is just getting the hips and the legs up because I'm basically going to move my hips and legs up, grab their head and arm while I'm up there and then pull it back down where I can mess with their, you know, and their head and their uh, neck and arm and choke them out. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna shoot our hips up into the air, and but at the very top, when we get all the way up, we're gonna lock the triangle. If you don't know how to lock the triangle, it's very simple. Um, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one leg, it's gonna go underneath the other leg, and my foot's gonna go over here by my knee. So you see, I'm not down here crisscrossing my feet like normal guard. I slide this foot all the way up behind my knee. I really want it in the crease, okay? I still have advanced students that say like this is a triangle. No, if it's resting on your calf muscle here, you have not locked that triangle in all the way. Push that through, get it all the way so it's touching your thigh up here, and then lock it down. Other important thing is that your foot's all the way through. See how my whole foot is through here? Very important. If it's on my toes, then when they try to posture up, my leg's gonna slip out. So we really wanna pull our feet back, jiu-jitsu feet, no ballerina toes, pull our foot back and lock it tight behind our knee. Every time we go, we flip flop sides. So first time I go, I shoot my hips up, I lock my triangle, come down. Next time I go, I shoot my hips up and lock the triangle on the other side and come down. So every time we're changing sides. Any questions? Level two, also pretty easy, is adding that triangle lock, basically. Making sure that we lock up a good triangle at the very top. One question from Jen. Uh, Jen, where are you here? What's up? So for the triangle, um, uh, hold, do you want us to start up and roll back and then do it, or do you want us to start down? Yeah, so when you're first starting, it's gonna be a lot easier if you start sitting up because when you roll back, that's gonna give you the momentum. Sometimes our core is not strong enough to keep ourselves up unless we have a little helping hand from the momentum. If you feel like you can do it just laying down and you can still get the results, I don't care if you sit up and roll back and get all the way up to here, or if you start here and roll back and get all the way up to here. The problem is if you start here and you just go up like this, that's not it, right? You really need to get up onto your shoulders. So if you need to sit up to do that, that's fine. If you don't need to, then don't, because it's gonna be a little more of a challenge. You're gonna engage your core a little bit more if you don't start with the momentum, all right? So if you don't have to, don't. If you have to, do it. Great question. Any other questions? All right, one minute on the clock. We're gonna go as many as we can, good ones. Get to your positions. Ready, set, begin. We're rolling back and kicking up. Lock it nice and strong, strong feet. Nice, Bryce, excellent. Good, Mariella. And we don't have to be up there all day. We get up there, we get it, we're done. Come back down. We're not legit really gonna stay up there when we're going live anyways. We're there for a second. Nice, Lexi. 
<laughs> All right, I see Corey's gotten some interference. It's okay. Keep it going. Keep it going. Nice, Josh. That's a good one. Let's see it, Tristan. Let's see it. You got it, bud. Nice. Good, good, good. Some of you are going to need some more momentum. Some of you need less. It's fine. It's like hot sauce. Use as much as you need. And that's about it. Don't go overboard with it. Changing sides each time, making sure we change sides locked up. That foot should be on the thigh, not on the calf. Five, four, three, two, one. Time. Relax. Great job, everyone. Excellent, excellent work. So that logically takes us to um, level three. I'll try and go very fast with this one. But in short, this one's a tough one. So if you don't get it, don't get too um, upset with yourself. This one, I still have adults in my adult class that have a hard time doing this because this uses your core, but also like these side core muscles, these oblique muscles um, to balance. Now this is kind of like the what if they don't just stay in your guard. What happens if I open my guard up to go for the triangle and they try and pass my guard. They try to move left or move right. That's a normal thing for both bullies and other martial arts to do. We open up the legs, we open the guard. They try to grab my legs and throw them to the side. That's normal. But what I have to be able to do is I have to be able to spin and do my triangle at the same time. And we call that spin cutting the angle. Um, and I'll show it. It looks like this. So let's say I start looking at this gray wall. My bad guy, the partner's over here. And they go either left or right. I'm going to do a half turn. So I roll back. I do my half turn. And now I'm facing this way. So I started facing that way. Now I'm facing this way. And the secret is being a chicken. Walk, walk, walk. You got you to you gotta be, gotta be a chicken. You got to have the chicken wings. It's all in the arms. So what I'm doing is when I turn, I'm grabbing the, the ground with my elbow. Because I can't use my legs to turn. My legs are doing the choke. So when I roll back, I move one of my elbows out. My elbow, let's say it grabs the ground over here. I'm going to pull myself that way towards my elbow. So I roll back. I grab the ground and it pulls myself that way. The secret is to not turn too much. What happens to a lot of people is they, they get overzealous. They overcommit. They do too much. They pull too far and then they tip over to the side like this. And of course, if they tip over to the side, they're going to push your legs down, get past your legs. Now they're in side control. Now making you eat dirt, punching you in the face, whatever the bad guy is trying to do. So start with small turns. But if you can do this, if you can just turn on your back without using your arms or legs, you've got it. That's all it is. Now I'm just adding my arms to it, making it even easier to where I can turn even faster. If you can do that, you got this drill. So what we're doing is we're shooting our legs up, doing the triangle, and we're doing a half turn. So I roll back, I shoot my legs up, we do the triangle, do my half turn, restart. Now go the other way. I roll back, shoot my triangle, half turn. Any questions on that? Okay, the biggest challenge with this is not falling over. You gotta keep your posture facing the ceiling. If you go and you fall over like this, now we're done, all right? So let's try it out, level three, here we go. Make sure you have enough space to move around. Ready. Set, go. Nice, Jenna, that's pretty good, that's pretty good. Good, Josh, make sure we actually turn, not just our legs, like the whole body, the whole unit, everything, everything you just have, every, oh, your, your whole body has to turn, not just your legs and your back stays still. You gotta turn everything. Nice, Lexi, that's a pretty good turn. I know if you're on carpet, it's gonna be tough. If you can do this on carpet, you're gonna become the triangle masters. Nice, Bryce. Good, good, good job, dude. Yep, reset if you have to. We got going to the right now. Let's try going to the left also. Make sure we uh, change both sides. Try turning both ways. Nice, Mariella, looking good. Keep putting that hard work in, Corey. I see you, bud. All right, we're over halfway done. Got 20 seconds left. Your ab muscles might be getting tired. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Don't quit on me yet. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, time. Very good, everyone sit up. 
great, great, great job. And that drill is going to be harder for some of you guys, depending on your current situation training wise. If you want to make that drill really, really easy, go nogi. Just wear a rash guard like a shirt like this one. If you're like, uh, I don't know what else you call them, kind of like an Under Armour kind of shirt. But that's going to make the friction very low. And you're going to slide very fast. You're going to feel like a top. If you're in a gi and you're on carpet, you're going to have so much friction that you're going to turn less. And your gi might get a little messed up and be a little frustrating. That's okay. Just keep in mind, everyone's training a little bit differently right now. Your results might be a little different. When you do go back to the mats or you lose the gi top, maybe you're practicing on your own in workout clothes, or maybe you practice maybe in the kitchen or someplace that doesn't have carpet, you're going to find the spin happens a lot easier. But keep in mind for those people that do have it easy, who might be spinning on harder, like this is kind of a textured hardwood floor, it's kind of medium. Some of you guys have a really smooth, like a laminate. You guys have it really easy. <laughs> so don't, don't get it uh, twisted. You know, this, we have to be able to turn on all kinds of surfaces. You know, or if we're gonna attack and we're on concrete, we're gonna attack and we're in the sandbox, wood chips, we gotta be able to do that turn at least 90 degrees, if not, maybe a little bit more. I see I got a hand up from Corey. Corey, what's your question, sir? My whole house is about carpet. The only ones that are not <laughs> carpet is the kitchen and the bathroom. That's what it means. All right, so yeah, that, that's a little tough for you uh, today, but I thought you're doing a pretty good job, you know? If anything, uh, when I used to train on carpet a lot, what happened is like the tail of my gi, called the skirt of the gi, kind of gets lifted up, and you kind of get like this rug burn on the bottom of your back a little bit. That's not too pleasant, but otherwise, if you can really work on that turn, it's going to be, you know, pristine. It's going to be awesome. So uh, that was the first drill. I know that drill took a long time, but those are those kind of awkward motions. We're not used to using our legs. that are really going to come in handy to help us with, um, you know, just being a versatile martial artist. Um, now we're going to kind of work some versatility on the feet. So I'm going to stand up. This will be our last drill for today. And then we'll switch into maybe some kind of game if we have enough time. Okay. So uh, we're gonna go with a little bit of versatility on the feet. A versatility on the feet is obviously, you know, moving very quickly, moving different ways, all that kind of stuff. Who's ever played Twister? Anybody ever played Twister before? It's kind of like a game that has a mat with different colors on it and you spin a thing. I just thought about that. Twister is like the ultimate versatility exercise. You know, moving different ways you weren't expecting, figuring out things. That is kind of like an ultimate game for versatility. Um, maybe I can think of a way to make that into martial arts for Twister and you make it work. That might be a good idea. Um, look into that, make a note. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna footwork being versatile. We did this a little bit with striking last week, I think earlier in the week, where we had the one, the twos, the threes, the fours, the fives, moving all kinds of different ways. Today, I just wanna focus on the footwork. We're not throwing any punches. We're just moving our foot feet around. If you weren't here, I'll explain it really quick. I'm gonna be in my ready stance. I'm gonna say a number. The number represents which way we're going to move. And we don't know which way we're gonna move, of course, until I say it. I say number one, we step forward. Number two is backwards. Number three is to the left. Number four is to the right. We're gonna do one round of one minute with just that, just one, two, three, and four. We're gonna master that. Then we'll put the big boy, big girl shoes on and get into the higher numbers. But let's just work on those, the four step right here. So good stances, everybody, good stances. Remember one is the front, two is back, three is left, four is right. Don't focus on the screen too much. I know sometimes the screen flip flops. So you just focus on, you know your left, you know your right. Here we go. And one. One. Two. One. Two. Three, two, one, four, one, two, 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 one. Nice, good, Bryce. Three, two, one, four. Three, four, one, two, three, three, 
two, one, one. And relax. Good, good, good. Looking around, of course, it's impossible for me to see everyone at one time, but it's kind of going through. Everyone's looking pretty good. Everyone's looking pretty good. Um, now we're going to add the five and the six. The five and six are step and pivots. So five and six are going to mirror three and four. So three is to the left. Five is also going to be to the left. So what's going to happen is I'm going to step and turn. So I'm going to turn to the left. Six is going to mirror four. So four was a step to the right. Well, six is going to be a, a pivot to the right, so a right turn. So now all we're doing is adding a five, which is a left turn, and adding a six, which is the right turn. After you finish your turn, reset and face the front. So if I say five, I'm going to turn to the left, and then I'm going to turn back to the front. So if I just turn for like a second and I come back. Let's try it out. We'll start slow. Here we go. Hands up. Good stances. And one. One, two, two, three, four, five. So I turn and now I come back. Good. Six, turn and come back. Excellent. Everyone's got it. We'll go a little bit faster. Here we go. One, three. Two, four, six, one, one, three, five, two, two, four, three, four, one. Six, five, one. Good, awesome. That's been way better than last week. No one's throwing any punches, so just remember, keep your hands up. This is not hands up. Don't get too preoccupied with that. Now we're gonna do the one thing we didn't do with it last week. We're going to get into the real mind explosion. And I'm only going to do this round slow. I'm not going to do this round fast because we're already going to have enough to think about. First thing we're going to do, we're going to reprogram ourselves. We're going to change what we just did. Five, is still turn to the left. Six, still turn to the right. But I don't go back. You now see why this would be more confusing? Watch, I'll explain. Let's say Coach Colton's doing a round, and I do this. I say one. Boom, I say one. Boom, I say two. Boom, I say five. So I turn, now I say one. Well, one moving forward was that way, towards the camera. But now that I'm facing this way, moving one, my new front is that way, right? So I say one, now I'm moving here. Until Coach Colton were to say six, I would turn back this way. So now we're not turning back to the front. After the turn, we stay facing our new direction, that becomes our new center, and now it's one, two, three, four, all facing this way, right? So it's another level of kind of focus and versatility. We're not throwing any punches, and we're going to go slow. I think I saw a hand from Josh. Josh, what is your question, sir? Uh, for level two, when you first said something about five and six, I automatically thought that we were going to stay in that position for that time. <laughs> well, then you already got it. In that case, you already got it. All right. Any other questions? Very good. So we'll do this, and then we'll hop into our game. So we're going to keep this nice and slow. We don't want anyone to get too confused. Good stances. Kia! And one. One. Two. Three. Six. One, one, six, good. So if we're doing correct, we should all be facing away from the camera, right? Because I said six and I said six again. So that's two half turns, which means now we're 180 
Shoes are facing backwards. Good. One. Two. One. Three. Five. Awesome. Two. Three. Three. Five. All right, back to center. Great job. And attention. Yes, sir. Relax. Everyone have a second black ball? No, it wasn't too bad, was it? So our word was versatility today. A versatility, you know, we're working all the things. Versatility is kind of a bummer sometimes. So versatility is code for working the things you don't like to do sometimes. And that's a tough habit to break. Even adults, you know, we have a saying that's uh, no growth in the comfort zone, no comfort in the growth zone, which means to kind of grow and become better people, better martial artists, better at whatever. You've got to do those things that are tough for you. You don't grow by doing the things that are easy to you. And it doesn't matter if it's a video game. It doesn't matter if it's math. It doesn't matter what it is. To become better at something, you've got to do those tough and challenging things to you. So if you're going through a class and the class is so easy for you that you don't break a sweat, don't learn anything new, it's not challenging you, probably not growing in that class or in that activity. Um, and that used to be like the frustrating thing for me when I was in school. You have the PE teachers and we'd like play a sport and they do like the steam like, we're today we're learning how to pass a basketball. I'm like, oh man, we did that like a million times already. Um, and it's sometimes it's good to review, don't get me wrong, but if you never learn anything new and you're never pushing yourself, then you're never really gonna become versatile uh, in anything. So now we're gonna play a bit of a game. Let me go over here to our handy dandy whiteboard. All right, flipping the camera around, perfect. So our thing today, I think all my pins are drying up on me. Oh, that one's like non-existent. All right, let's give it that one. Let's try this one. All right, we're gonna play a game of hangman today. So here's my hangman and we're gonna go sea creature this is gonna be some kind of sea creature it lives in the water and this is going to be hmm, hmm. all right the sea creature is two words long first word has six letters second word has four letters we'll start at the top Mr. Tristan, guess a letter for me, sir, or guess the creature. Um, does it start, like, does, is there a G? Is there a G? There is one G, right? First word, third position. Great guess. Bryce, guess a letter or guess the creature. E. E. There is one letter E. I apologize if it's a little tough to read. I need to get a new marker over here. Lexi, your turn. Just guess a letter. Um, a. A. There is one letter A. First word, first position. We'll now go over to Corey. Corey, your turn, sir. Is there a B? A B. There is no letter B. So we have the head on our person. Josh, your turn. There a C. There is no letter C. Now go down to Jenna. Jenna, your turn. Is there an O? There is no letter O. Nice try. Mariella. Anglerfish. Yes, anglerfish is the correct answer. 
Good work. Angler fish. That's the, if you watched Finding Nemo, that's the fish that has kind of the light on the forehead. All right. Good work with our hangman for today. Ah, there. All right. Uh, so for in class day, I got a couple of announcements for everyone. Um, we were going to start back classes this week. That got pushed back to next week. Hopefully everyone saw, uh, I guess everyone did because everyone's here, uh, the message on that. Um, that's just for making sure that everything is nice and clean, everything's safe, staff is ready for the new classes and all that kind of stuff. Um, if you are planning on coming to classes next week, I did send out a link later, uh, or earlier today, I mean, um, where you can reserve your two class times. If you'd like to go ahead and come back to classes, just make sure you set aside the two times that work best for your family. Um, if you're coming to class next week, you need to bring two things. One, you need to bring uh, some kind of mask. That can be a reusable mask, disposable mask. Um, there are even some tutorials on how you can make uh, a one-time use mask from materials you have at home. So many of those kind of things lately online. Um, or you can just go out and, and buy one, that's also fine. Um, the other thing you need to bring is gloves, preferably boxing gloves if you have them. That's just another way that we can make sure that people are punching uh, or touching as few things as possible. So if we're not actually punching the bags and punching the pads, of course we're cleaning the bags and pads. It's just another way we can make sure that we're not spreading as many germs because uh, better be safe than sorry is the same. But otherwise, we are set to have classes on site starting next week. And we are continuing to have Zoom classes uh, next week as well for those families that are not yet ready to return to the academy. So if you're, uh, maybe you live with someone and they can't travel or it's a risky situation, uh, we will also be doing Zoom classes as well. And we'll continue to do that until things change and we're kind of playing it bit by bit. Does anyone have any questions about classes starting back up, anything we did today or anything like that at all? All right, I got one question from Jenna, Jenna, yes, ma'am. What color stripe is versatility? Versatility is our green stripe. Green stripe versatility. Okay, Great. thank you. Great question. You're welcome. All right, so let's go ahead and drum roll for our student day. All right, our student. Oh, there they are. Students doing a phenomenal job. I'm gonna give my student of the day to Mr. Tristan Tovar Tindar. Tristan, you are my student of the day today. Congratulations, sir. Great work. We're uh, keeping consistent throughout the class. Uh, showing up on time, you know, doing what you have to do. Great work, keep up the awesome effort. I'm missing over that certificate to your family shortly. Uh, other than that, we can go ahead and stand up and we'll bow out. Everyone pop up, pop up. And Lexi, I totally know that you knew it was an anglerfish right after your turn. I saw your hand. <laughs> All right, a few together hands by our side and bow. Oh, awesome job, everyone. I'll see you guys next time. Have an amazing day. I'll see you very, very soon. Bye.